I retired from the FBI March 1979. At that time, I was in charge of the FBI Los Angeles Division. I had more than 700 personnel under my command. Let's go back to 1776, May the 1st. Adam Weissoff was commissioned by the Rothschild family to set up the goals to control and take over the world with a one world government. And Weissoff came up with 25 goals. Among these goals were control the press, corrupt the youth through sex and drugs, elect our own people, our own people meaning the Illuminati, to key positions in all levels of the government, city, county, state, and federal. And it goes on. The final goal was to take over the world, the one world government. Information is very well documented by William Guy Carr in his magazine, his book, excuse me, Pawns in the Game. Pawns in the Game. Pawns in the Game. When I retired, I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea about the Illuminati. I had no idea about Adam Weishoff. This is the direction that we have to go. Americans, for the most part, are oblivious to what's really going on behind the scenes. Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I want to show you what goes on in my mind. caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number 
is 600, three score, and six. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Remember, brothers and sisters, don't look at the tree, but rather look around you and observe the forest. Remember that prophecy does not open like a book, but rather it unravels like a scroll. And that spirit of Antichrist who the Lord's servants warned us about 2,000 years ago has survived by going from one temple to the next, to the next, and to the next. And 2,000 years later, the dragon's plans are starting to become more and more evident on the chessboard of deception. So when you see all the religious leaders gathered together with the high priest of the New World Order, this is a representation of the Tower of Babel. This was the warning that the Most High was giving us in the book of Revelation when it comes to mystery, Babylon. First, we must examine what Babylon means. That word in the Hebrew is Bavel. It literally means confusion by mixing. I want you to remember that for later on in the documentary. So it is very evident that the plan of the dragon is to create confusion by mixing. But what is it? What is the game plan? What is it that he truly wants to mix? Do you remember in the word of the Lord where it talks about the ten toes in the last days. They were mixed with iron and clay. I want you to remember that as well for later on in the video. You see, my brothers and sisters, Babylon is not just some location on a map. It is a very ancient spirit.
do you remember what was revealed in part one of the whole world is a stage. Over and over again, we have warned you how the Luciferians use greater and lesser magic to control the minds of the masses and how they can use colors in lesser magic to divine a spell on the minds of the people to submit to the will of the dragon. And do you also remember how I exposed how the promotion of Ukraine all around the world and throughout social media was a PSYOP mind control spell to sear into the minds of the masses with lesser magic to love the colors blue and yellow to admire those colors to fight for those colors and how it just so happened to be that the very colors blue and yellow represented the promotion of the abomination subliminally Hundreds of pictures and videos, commercials throughout social media, Hollywood, the news, and the list goes on, would associate blue and yellow when it comes to the abomination. And this is how they would subconsciously control the minds of the masses by simply taking those colors and formatting the minds of the masses and by taking blue and yellow and formatting, shaping and molding the minds of the people to fight for those colors, to admire those colors, they would simply switch Ukraine with the abomination. In doing this, the people would be programmed to love, admire and support the abomination even greater, strengthening the spell of the beast well brothers and sisters I want you to take a walk with me as we go deeper down this path exposing the enemy and the moves that he has strategically placed on the chessboard of deception what would be the odds that when it comes to Babylon what would be the odds that the same colors the dragon has chosen using lesser magic to impress into the minds of the masses to love the abomination would be the very colors that represented Mystery Babylon. Are you starting to see how the game is being played on the chessboard of deception? In the world they call Babylon the gate of the gods. And if you have studied in the book of Genesis, this is the very place where the tower of Babel was built. Behold, I show you a mystery. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them. Nothing will be restrained from them 
which they have imagined to do. Go to and let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from hence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel or Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Have you ever considered that mystery Babylon in the end of the days, this ancient spirit, the mother of harlots and all the abominations of the earth is a cesspool of all the false religions in the occult united together to make war against the lamb. And have you considered that the Old Testament represents an outward and the New Testament represents the inward? Just as in the Old Testament, a male child would be circumcised, but in the New Testament, we are circumcised in our hearts. Just like in the Old Testament, the temple was built for the Most High God, but in the New Testament, we are the temple of God. Could it be, brothers and sisters, this mystery of Babylon is an inward Babel this time? Could it be that the Tower of Babel is one that is within? If you look at the chart, that I have put together for you to help you understand the mystery. I want you to think about the Tower of Babel and all the pictures that you see online that portray what the Tower of Babel looks like. Don't you find it interesting that it is in the shape and design of a strand of DNA. Please don't tell me you think that is a coincidence. And now we're starting to see why one of the favorite sayings of the Luciferians is as above, so below. That what they tried to do in the book of Genesis in the beginning is what they are doing now in the book of Revelation at the end. But instead of going up to fight against God, they're going down to fight against God. Remember that Jesus Christ said, the kingdom of heaven is within us. And just as they were building this tower, to wage war against the Lord God. I want you to put this piece by piece with me, my brothers and sisters, take a walk with me and let us examine the mystery with only the help of Jesus Christ because without him, you and I are nothing, but we can do all things through him. I want you to look at verse three. It says they will have brick for stone and slime for mortar. This is important because I truly believe this is a foreshadow and a warning to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, exposing the end day's plan when it comes to the abomination. If you notice... A brick is not natural. It is man-made. It is taking that which is from the earth and mixing things together to create something new. It is said this brick, a burnt tile, is so-called from the white and chalky clay of which bricks were made. And it says there will be bricks for stone, but if you know anything about a stone, 
And I have preached messages as God has given revelation that we are called lively stones according to the letter of Peter. But this word for stone in the Hebrew, Evan, is a larger small stone, a calming stone in natural state. You see, this has to be stones from a natural place. You see. Now, I want you to think about this logically. When it comes to God, he calls us lively stones because we have to naturally be called by him. But when it comes to the beast, the people are bricks. They are mixed together. They're artificial. They're not the real thing, you understand. But let us move on to the slime from mortar. That word for slime is chemar. This is a slime, pitch, and asphalt. But when you look at the word mortar, it is a prop properly a bubbling up of water, a wave of earth, mire, or clay. Once again, you see this battle between the real and the natural and the artificial and man-made. Now I pray that your eyes will open, that you will be able to see the mystery of Babylon. Notice, they said that they want to build a city and a tower whose top may reach heaven, that they can make a name for themselves. Notice that the beast notice there are three parts to the abomination in Revelation 13. It is the mark, the name, and the number. But yet here in the beginning of time, remember the Most High declared the end from the beginning. If you want to know your enemy's future, study his past. That word there. Strong's H, 8034. Shame. Shame. You notice the word for name in the Hebrew is shame. That is how you pronounce it. And whenever somebody tries to make a name for themselves, instead of glorifying God, isn't it ironic? It brings shame unto them. But brothers and sisters, you see the word for name could mean reputation, fame, glory. You see, a memorial and a monument as a mark or memorial of individuality as a mark or memorial of individuality as a mark or memorial of individuality implication honor authority character you see but remember brothers and sisters babylon means confusion by mixing and just as they mixed and made bricks instead of stone and slime instead of mortar. You see, the mystery is they don't want which is natural and ordained by the Most High God. They want to pervert that which is organic. Are you starting to see? Are you starting to see the bigger picture? Could it be? That instead of an outward temple, in an outward tower being built, in an outward circumcision, could it be that just as our hearts are circumcised, and now Jesus Christ tells us the kingdom of heaven is within, and now Jesus Christ tells us that our body is the temple of the Most High God, could it be possible, brothers and sisters, that just as if you look at your body, the human body under a microscope looks exactly like the heavens above. When one looks out into the heavens with a telescope, they start realizing how similar it looks to the inside of a human being. So could it be that in the last hour, the dragon would gather all the people together once again to make this name, you see, the number of man. 
and that this battle would be to fight against the kingdom of heaven within. And remember, brothers and sisters, Babylon, Babel, means confusion by mixing. Remember that the Most High God warned us that the ten toes in the book of Daniel would be a mixing of the iron and the clay. It couldn't be possible, brothers and sisters, that that old serpent, the dragon, using the power of technology with the abomination, is turning the human temples created for the Most High God to be natural and organic like stones and like mortar. But instead, he is changing the bodies like brick and slime. And just like the very name Babel, this brings confusion by the mixing and ultimately confusion by the language. But did you know that your DNA has its own language? But did you know that DNA has a language? And could it be that those who chose, that those who choose brick and slime instead of stone and mortar, those who choose a false creation of the beast instead of the true creation of Christ, that their DNA ends up with confusion. And just like when Adam and Eve sinned against God in the garden, they became disconnected from God. Are you starting to see the bigger picture? No, brothers and sisters, I'm going to go over this one more time because I know, I know how important this revelation truly is and I want to make sure you see it for what it is. Remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want the wisdom of God to know these mysteries, you must first start by fearing the Lord God, loving Him, obeying Him, Denying yourself and picking up your cross and following after him. The mystery of Babylon. The Lord brings up the old serpent in the book of Revelation. Why though? Have you ever considered why is it that Satan as a serpent is not really mentioned that much? Only in the book of Genesis is there a real emphasis of Satan as the serpent. But here we get to the book of Revelation. And God doesn't just call him the serpent. He says that old serpent, the dragon. He's giving you a clue. Old in a reference to go back to the beginning of Genesis. Remember, he declares the end from the beginning. It is very clear that when you parallel Genesis chapter 11 to the end of the days in Revelation, you can see the agenda of the beast crystal clear. The people unite together as the old world order. Are you seeing it now? But in the end of the days, they're calling it a new world order where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. Or the Great Reset. In the book of Genesis, they come together with one language. And they build a, and they start to build a tower called Babel or Babel. To reach heaven, to wage a war against the Most High God. Instead of stones and mortar, which are natural and organic, created by the hands of God, they choose brick and slime. These are man-made by mixing elements together. Remember that we are built up as the temple of God. We are stones, the Bible says. We are untouched, unchanged. We remain organic and natural. Our genetic makeup has not been changed. I need you to see this.
Please pay attention. Remember, Babel, Babylon, this means confusion by mixing. But the word says that God is not the author of confusion. Notice he specifically emphasizes on that because Satan, the dragon, is the author of confusion. Because Satan wants to bring confusion. His number one goal is to cause God to be angry at his people. His number one goal is to turn the children of God into the enemy of God. By causing them to sin, commit idolatry, to get involved in the ways of Babylon. To provoke the Lord to anger. Because one of the strategies of the old spirit of Babylon. If you remember very carefully in the scriptures. In the book of Jeremiah. God's judgment on the people. Because of their evil ways. Was that he gave them up to the king of Babylon and he invaded and besieged Jerusalem and took them captive are you starting to see it now do you remember in past videos how I have warned you that Hollywood is the magic wand of the Antichrist we know who is behind the green screen curtain. And just as the Most High God uses prophets and seers to give prophetic messages of what will take place in the future, the dragon uses Hollywood to subliminally put into the minds of the people what he plans to do in the future. Please understand, this is not a game. These Luciferians are not smiling. They take this very serious. And the beast is operating out of very ancient, high forms of witchcraft and magic. This is Mystery Babylon, brothers and sisters. They have ancient demons using the powers of ancient demons and fallen angels and principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. They operate through greater and lesser magic, sigil magic, very powerful forms of mind control and predictive programming. So that way when the masses watch these movies or play these video games or whatever it is that they're divining through, it goes into the mind and it settles into their subconscious. And like a seed, it, e it eventually germinates as the beast is making moves on the chessboard of deception down the road. And what happens is all of these subliminal messages that have been planted through Hollywood will cause the masses to submit to the will of the dragon because of these magical arts. Are you starting to see the bigger picture? I want to talk about a movie that came out over 10 years ago and they handpicked Vin Diesel the movie just so happened to be called Babylon A D and I'm not going to waste time and play the trailer because the development of this movie was not about making money it was simply about sending a message across the earth that mystery Babylon is coming to fruition. I want to simply break down some of the subliminal seeds that were planted into the minds of the people. Referring to the abomination. The changing of a human being. The merging 
in the mixing of the iron in the clay and a few other things. You see, to the carnal minded, to the lukewarm Christians, they don't see what the enemy is hiding in plain sight. Remember that the Luciferians understand the laws and principles of the Most High God. That in order for the dragon to do certain things in this world, he has to tell the people first. And this makes the spell much more powerful because he knows that mankind is made in the image of God. And if he can cause the people to think it's just entertainment and not reject the demonic seeds being planted because they're too busy watching what they think is just a movie with popcorn, Satan is also putting a seed that will pop like corn down the road. And the magical spell takes place in the minds of those who are still blinded. With that being said, let us begin. Notice the predictive programming of Russia being involved in this movie. And it just so happens to be that this war has broke out over 10 years after just after the same time the abomination was released on the earth. And speaking of abomination, I want you to watch what I call the magical seeds of Hollywood that are planted. Once they reach a motel in Canada, Turup cleans up and injects his new passport into his neck. Once they reach a motel in Canada, Turup cleans up and injects his new passport into his neck. Did you see it? What would be the odds that they would plant that magical seed in the minds of people to be conditioned and pre-programmed to accept a injection as a means of a passport? Does that sound familiar to you? Did I not tell you that prophecy doesn't open quickly like a book? but rather slowly unravels like a scroll. This is 10 years ago. They have been planning this longer than you think. And that's why it is not checkers to the enemy, but rather chess. Let us continue. Once things calm down, Rebecca explains how Aurora is like a daughter to her, and three months ago, everything seemed to change in her. Turo finds out that she is a complex being that is well beyond that of a normal human being. Turo finds out that she is a complex being that is well beyond that of a normal human being. Turo finds out that she is a complex being that is well beyond that of a normal human being. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. I'm pregnant. Twins. What? What's going on? Sister Rebecca doesn't even believe it because Aurora is still a virgin. I'm pregnant. Twins. What? What's going on? Sister Rebecca doesn't even believe it because Aurora is still a virgin. Notice that this woman is a representation of a Virgin Mary, not human. What do you think they're really trying to say? 
it is very clear that they are referring to Mystery Babylon on the inside this time. Getting to the genetic code and changing mankind to where they're no longer what God made them to be. Notice the city. Notice the corruption, fornication, and the list goes on. It is that ancient spirit of the world, Mystery Babylon. Notice Vin Diesel is a walking advertisement for Babylon because notice all the mystery religions tattooed on his body. Egyptology. And you see that satanic symbol? That's from the Book of the Dead, the Necromonicon. This is what it's from. So it is very evident, my brothers and my sisters, that they have been planning this move for a very long time. But wait a minute. What if I told you that the Divining Wand of Hollywood just released another movie with Brad Pitt and other major actors and actresses called Babylon. And once again, the movie is pointless. But it's not about the movie. Brothers and sisters, you have to snap out of this false reality. The Antichrist don't care about making money. He already has the allegiance of the rulers of the world. When they come out with movies, it's about the message and the decree. Operating through high forms of witchcraft and magic. This movie trailer for Babylon that just released is so unclean I can't even play it for you. But I want you to see the beginning. Notice it is a whorish woman riding upon a body of men. You see, the Luciferians can get away with subliminal messages to those who don't have eyes to see, but for those who walk in the spirit, we see right through their witchcraft subliminals. And we can see the coded message miles away. Because the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty that we serve is an eternity ahead of the steps of the enemy. And he reveals those things that are hidden in the darkness to his servants. Notice that the main cover for this movie Babylon is a whorish woman in scarlet color. Sound familiar? I can guarantee this movie is trash. All it's about. This movie is just a celebration to the exaltation of Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. God all throughout the Old Testament, he gives us foreshadows of the Son of God. Whether it's the Lamb that was offered, that was a foreshadow of the great Lamb of God. Whether it was the Sabbath day, this is a great foreshadow of the eternal rest in Christ. And the list goes on and on and on. All of these foreshadows of the great and almighty Messiah. But what if I told you that the Most High God has also given us warnings of foreshadows in the Old Testament, warning us about the beast system and the abomination. Do you remember the Gospel of Vaca documentary? It is very evident that we exposed that Vaca 
means cow. And this is where you get the very word they use when it comes to the abomination. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you have not taken the consideration in time to go to the website and watch these videos that we have put together with tears, prayer, and fasting in hopes that your eyes would be open to the truth. But there is another foreshadow warning of the beast system and the abomination. And it's in the story of the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis. Remember, in the Old Testament, it was an outward. In the New Testament, it's inward. Old Testament, it was a literal temple built by Solomon for the Most High God. In the New Testament, we are the temple of God. Remember that in the Old Testament, heaven was always looked at as simply above. But in the New Testament, we find out by the Messiah himself that he also lets us know the kingdom of heaven is within. So this time, and just like the people united under the old world order by the beast, by the spirit of the dragon in the Old Testament, they're now coming together under the new world order. And instead of building a physical tower, with bricks instead of stone and slime instead of mortar to physically go up into the heavens. They are now building a spiritual tower that goes down into the temples of God to fight against the heaven within. And instead of bricks and slime, it's the corruption of the human genome. It's no longer stone and mortar. In other words, it's no longer organically what God made it to be, untouched by man, but rather reformatted as a brick, sliced, cut, etched, carved like a graving image and marked. But remember that Babel, Babel, means confusion by mixing. And it was the sin of the people that caused God's wrath to come upon them and he confused their language. Satan knows this, his agenda. Remember, Balak, Balaam, remember in the Old Testament how the enemy found out he could cause Israel to commit idolatry and sin to turn them against God and cause God to be angry with his people. You see how crafty the enemy is. But have you considered, and just like in the Old Testament, it was an outward tower, and because of their evil, it was a literal confusion of their literal language. It was a confusion of their actual language. But if this now is an inward attack, and if the Tower of Babel goes down instead of up, and instead of going up, the Tower of Babel spirals down into the genome of the human temple. Then instead of God coming down with wrath to confuse the literal language, he would allow the language of the DNA to be confused. Are you starting to see it now? And because those that have fallen away allowed their DNA to be changed, from a rock and mortar the way God made it into a brick and slime by the hands of the beast. Their DNA's language that God ordained would be corrupted and confounded. Did you know that your DNA has the name of the Lord in it? And did I not warn you in documentaries that have been taken down and we had to re-upload them on our website that the name of the Most High God is in your DNA and that your DNA is the book of your life and it's opened like a scroll even scientists who don't believe in any creator know this mystery
But yet when it comes to the Christian mainstream, they sit there scratching their heads because they've been in the world secretly. They have not been praying. They have not been seeking God. And because of that, this strong delusion is coming upon billions I want you to watch this video, and we'll be right back. Proof of God, part four. God's true name is recorded within our DNA. So let me go ahead and explain. Our chains of DNA contain four nucleotide-based pairs called adenine, guanine, thiamine, and cytosine. And then there's a unit within the DNA strand called a sulfuric bridge. This sulfuric bridge holds our entire DNA strand together, and it only appears after every 10 nucleic acids have been laid down, and then after every 5 nucleic acids, and then after every 6, and then again after every 5 nucleic acids. So we get this repeating numerical value of 10565 5, 5 within our DNA strand. Well, it turns out the biblical name of God, Yahweh, contains the same numerical value as our DNA strand. yod heh vav -Hey. 10, 5, 6, 5. What's even more interesting is that if you take the Hebrew name of God, Yahweh, and place it on its side, you get the image of a human being. Part 3 of this video series suggests that DNA is a language. Many people were wondering what God made the language of DNA. Well, it's signed by the biblical God, Yahweh. But you do realize that this abomination, you see, it just so happens to be that the genetic sequence, the DNA, has numbers that are also assigned to it is add a third strand to the DNA and in doing this it changes the numbers and it just so happens to be that the DNA now receives six 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 your DNA is a right-handed double helix made up of these four things right here and the helix is held together by sulfuric bonds that appear after every 10 pairs of nucleotides every five pairs of nucleotides every six pairs of nucleotides and again every five pairs of nucleotides 10 5 6 5 10 5 6 5 or in the hebrew aleph bet yod he vav he the signature of your creator the signature of an artist under his painting if you will now the magic potion, if you actually read the patents, it is adding a triple helix and is adding more of this, which comes from a meteorite or a fallen star. And this 10565, yod he vav he, the signature of your creator, quickly turns into 156665. Do I have your attention yet? And this causes confusion because it is not the language that God created the DNA to speak, to understand. And now you see the mystery, this great falling away. And just as God confounded their languages and caused and allowed confusion because of the enemy, because they submitted to the enemy who is the author of confusion. He allowed their languages to change. And because many have fallen away and submitted to the spirit of the beast and submitted to the dragon, he says in the book of Thessalonians that he will allow a strong delusion to come upon them. Let us investigate what this word actually means. I want you to turn with me to the holy book of Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're going to start at verse 3. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. Now right there, we can clearly see that if the most high God is warning us not to let anyone deceive us, it's because we can be deceived. And Paul is not writing this letter to the world. He's writing it to the church. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That is apostasia. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. 
who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Have we not on have we not in countless hours of documentaries and videos and warnings for years showed you while everybody thinks there's going to be a literal temple he is already seated in billions of people right now in their bodies as the temple this spirit of antichrist have we not told you that when a person worships the son of god to the glory of God the Father, the mighty Holy Spirit will dwell in them as a temple. The same parallel, when it there is the same, remember that the devil wants to be like God. Therefore, those that show worship to the beast, the son of perdition, they give that homage to the dragon, and in return, the spirit of Antichrist dwells within them as a temple but you see he's one in the same you see Paul says remember you not that when I was with you I told you these things and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity does already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Remember, the abomination of desolation is when the great idol is brought into the temple and the sacrilege is committed. The Holy Spirit leaves the temple. You understand? I don't know why so many online think that God is going to be offended with another building created and animal sacrifice is done when he declared that Jesus Christ is his temple and Jesus Christ is his lamb and Jesus Christ was the final lamb there cannot be another sacrifice for salvation anything done in a temple will be considered blasphemy so why would God care about a temple made by the hands of man when he's already established his eternal temple which is Christ and we are the lively stones that are built up in this mighty temple wake up you want to believe that the antichrist is going to sit in some temple that God won't even recognize while he's looking at your body as his temple to invade. Because that's what the spirit of Babylon does. The king of Babylon invaded Israel. Read Jeremiah. But because of their wickedness, God gave them up to be carried away by Babylon. And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Remember Satan is that old serpent. He is a liar and a deceiver. It's one of his greatest weapons is to deceive. With all power and signs and lies, lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see, people don't love the truth. That's why videos get taken down because they hate the truth. But may God be our defense. And if you seek him, you will find him. And if you're hungry for the messages of God, regardless of where they are, he will lead you to these videos. Now listen to this, verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Imagine that. This is God. God sending the strong delusion that they'll believe a lie. Why? He already explained why. Because they don't love the truth because of their wickedness, because they have served the enemy and bowed their knee to the authority of the beast. We'll get into that a little bit later. But what does delusion mean? It is a word called plane. 
It literally means a wandering, a straying about. One led astray from the right way who roams around. Also a mental straying, error, wrong, opinion relative to morals or religion. Error, which shows itself in action, a wrong mode of acting. Error, that which leads into error, deceit or fraud. Fraudulent, a straying from orthodoxy or piety. Deceit, a strong delusion. And you're going to tell me because of some left behind series by a godless company that you think people will not be deceived into taking the abomination. And just as God sent a strong delusion to the people in the Tower of Babel trying to build a tower into heaven to fight God to try to take his position are they not playing God with the temples now are they not going in are they not invading downward spiraling now are they not downwardly invading trying to play God and changing the book that God created within the temples of the bodies of people and once again, just like the Tower of Babel, he sends that strong delusion because of their evil. He allows them to be led from the right path. And that should show you, brothers and sisters, stop believing these liars online. It is very clear that if somebody is led astray from the right way, it means they were Christians at one time. But then they listen to the lies of these false shepherds telling them, oh, this ain't the mark. This ain't, don't worry about it. You need to travel. You need to do what you got to do. Obeying the voices of dead shepherds. And in doing so, they have changed from stone and mortar into a man-made brick and slime. And God allows a strong delusion to come upon their mind, their body, their DNA, where even the very language of their genetic code changes the inward tower of Babel. And do you think it is a coincidence that Jacob sees a staircase? And I've mentioned this in the past, but no problem. I will do it again for the sake of you realizing the truth. Notice that Jacob is sleeping on a rock. You know, the Bible says that rock was Christ. That represents putting your mind on Christ. And when you put your mind on Christ, that represents the forehead, right? Where your mind is. Then something will open up to you. The true stairway to heaven. You see? Because when Jacob wakes up, he sees this stairway going into heaven and angels ascending and descending. Can't you see the parallel? When people put their mind on the dragon, there is a stairway, there is a tower that is created to try to force their way into heaven. What do you think they're doing at the Hadron Collider? These are all, this is all the spirit of Babylon. Why do you think the rituals were done in Switzerland? But who do you put your mind on? Is your mind on the rock? Is your mind on Christ? Or is your mind in the world and on the beast? That will determine what stairway you follow. Because what you need to know is the stairs that were built in those times spiraled like a strand of DNA. You see? So God is letting you know. You can choose the stairway you want to walk. You can choose to go the wicked route of Babel in the stairway of sin and confusion. Or you can choose Christ because he is the stairs. He is the only way to the Father. He is the eternal Bethel. He is the eternal house of God. Are you starting to see how deep this mystery really goes? 
Or maybe you need to see evidence that the enemy produces behind the green screen curtain. I want you to watch this video and we'll be right back. Tonight we're telling the story about how Birmingham is connecting us with every corner of the world and with one another. It's been a dark period in our lives, but tonight we're going to sprinkle a little stardust on the ceremony. The death of a star in the outer universe and the shards of light from its demise are heading straight for us. Here is Stella. Well named and she will find one of the shards. Now I'm no Brian Cox, but I'm told that the death of a star can trigger the birth of other stars, and I reckon this one is gonna do just that. It is a reminder of our common ancestry, a reminder of where we all come from into that shard. She whispers her hopes and dreams. It's times of darkness. We carry a dream of light that calls us all to the power. Up with percussionist Abraham Paddy Teddy. That's him at the top of the tower. Birmingham's Tower of Babel, or Tower of Birmingham, if you like. Birmingham's Tower of Babel. Birmingham's Tower of Babel. Let me ask you a question. My brothers and my sisters, do you think all of this is just coincidence and I'm just trying to get views? Or could it be possible that I am telling you the truth? That I am sent from the Lord Christ himself to warn you of what is really going on. What would be the odds that in 2022, the Birmingham Commonwealth Games, one of the most worldwide known events, would have such a satanic opening ceremony? And out of all things, they would highlight Mystery Babylon and the Tower of Babel, uniting the world once again but what if I told you it goes deeper and we're not going to spend an hour breaking down their satanic pagan new world order rituals. But I want to ask you a question for those of you who have actually taken the time out of the love of Christ to go on to the website and watch the other documentaries. Do you remember the gospel? of vodka. Do you remember the documentary to watch the videos because you don't want to perish because of a lack of knowledge? Do you remember the documentary? Do you remember the message that was released called the gospel of vodka? Sadly, because of the antichrist beast algorithm, Many of these videos were taken down and can really only be watched on our channel and other backup channels by the grace of God. In this prophetic message, the Most High God sent me to release a revelation and a message exposing the abomination 
that the very word for vodka is a cow and a bull. And it has to do with the woman riding the beast. And the very word for what they call the abomination, and it starts with the letter V, literally is from the root word, vaca, which means a cow and a bull. I'm not going to get into that message. You should have already watched it. But the revelation was given. And the mystery was revealed that during the time of Moses, when he went up to the mountain to meet with God, out of all things, they worshipped the golden calf. They worshipped the vodka. And this was a foreshadow that in the end days, the world would gather and lift up this abomination, this idol, as the idol of the world, the savior of mankind, the redeemer, that they would put their faith in this idol. What would be the odds that after 70% of the world has bowed the knee and allowed themselves to be changed from stones and mortar to brick and slime and allowed the language of their DNA to change by the idol worship of the vodka. After 70% of the world has bowed the knee, I want you to see what they bring out in this Birmingham 2022 occult ritual. Are you starting to see how the game is being played on the chessboard of deception? Brothers and sisters, the whole world is a stage. I want to show you what goes on in my mind, but I don't think you can handle it and if I showed you what goes on in my mind.
So do you think I'm just trying too hard, brothers and sisters? For a ministry who's not even partnered up with YouTube, why are we concerned with getting this video to as many as possible? It ain't for a YouTube check. It is to warn as many people of the truth because lies are exalted now and truth are fought and hunted down. Are you understanding? They're boasting right in front of your eyes. That's why the EU, that's why even in Europe right now, they have a replica of the Tower of Babel. They are boasting right before your eyes. And if you took the time and watched the other documentaries that we have warned you about when it comes to the abomination, you would have a greater understanding of the woman riding the beast. They bring out that vodka, that bull, to say the mission has been accomplished and the vodka has been lifted up as the idol, as the savior. And the great tower of Babel has now been accomplished within the genome of the temples. But still, so many of you would rather take the word of the crowd. But the last time I checked, when it comes to the judgment of God, the crowd was the ones deceiving the people. Not the few that were being thrown into a furnace, that was being thrown into a prison. The track record shows that the minority crying in the wilderness, being mocked, slandered, and persecuted were actually the ones that were sent by the Most High God. But because they hate the truth, God has given them up to the strong delusion in their believing the lie. Have you ever read in the Bible where Sodom and Egypt are referred to not as a actual location, but rather in the spirit? What is one of the worst things that God hates the most? Idolatry. The participating of worshiping idols, demons, false gods, in anything in creation. For we are only supposed to worship the Creator. But my question to you is this Do you believe that old serpent? The dragon can deceive the masses, including religious people like mainstream Christianity, into unknowingly participating in the occult religious rituals and as well as worship. If you said yes, you are absolutely correct. For one of the words that so many scholars undermine and overlook when it comes to the dragon is the word deception. From the root word, deceive. What is the definition of deception? What does it mean to deceive? That word in the Greek language is planao and it translates in the following manner to deceive, to err, to go astray, to seduce, to wander, and to be out of the way. I want you to hear the outline of biblical usage. 
to cause to stray, to lead astray, to be led aside from the right way, to go astray or wander or roam about, to be led away from the truth, to be led into error, to deceive, to be led into error. Listen carefully. To be led aside from the path of virtue, to go astray, to sin. To sever or fall away from the truth. Of heretics, to be led away into error and the sin. Now I want you to hear the Strong's definition. Planao. It says to properly cause to roam from safety, truth, or virtue. To go astray, to deceive and err, to seduce, wander, or be out of the way. Did you notice that it said to cause one to roam away from safety, truth, or virtue? This means that a person could be in the truth, in virtue, in safety, and be enticed to wander away from that protection, from that foundation into the wilderness of lies. Have you ever went through the book of Revelation and added up all the times the Bible mentions the old serpent, that same serpent that was in the Garden of Eden, you know, the dragon. Have you ever added up all the times in the book of Revelation where he deceives the masses? Well, it just so happens to be seven times. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I want to show you something that many so-called scholars will not perceive. What I'm about to tell you is one of the most important revelations that you will receive in this documentary. The reason why the Luciferians push the occult and promote sin the way they do everywhere you look is because the devil knows the only way he can truly deceive you is if you're of the world. Let me read it again because I don't think a lot of you caught it. It says that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. You see? But if we are not of the world, we will not be deceived. But before you just assume that you're not of the world, we must examine the art of deception. So Revelation 12, 9, it mentions him deceiving the whole world. Revelation 13, 14, he deceives them that dwell on the earth. You see? Revelation 18, 23, and the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth and for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. We'll talk about the word sorceries a little bit later. Deception number four. In Revelation 19, 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them 
that had received the mark of the beast. Does it not say right there, brothers and sisters, in Revelation 19.20, that those that received the mark of the beast took it because of deception? Yes or no? Deception number five. Revelation chapter 20, verse three. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Are you hearing this? Deception number six. Revelation chapter 20, verse eight. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And finally, number seven, which is the number of completion. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So my question to you, brothers and sisters, going over the definition of deceive or deception, and then going through the book of Revelation on how many times Satan, that old serpent, the dragon, deceiveth the whole world and deceive those that took the mark of the beast. Are you still going to believe the lie of 98% of the so-called shepherds online? You mean to tell me that those that take the abomination do it because they're deceived and the whole world is deceived by the dragon, but yet when it comes to the mark of the beast, there will be no deception at all. The devil will be an honest person and let the whole world know exactly what his plan is to get as many of them to go to the lake of fire. Do you truly believe? Do you truly believe that lines up with the track record of the dragon? Did he not deceive Adam and Eve from the very beginning of creation? In the book of Genesis. Did he come out and just say. Eve. I want to trick you. So that way you will die. I'm lying to you Eve. Do what I tell you to do. Or did he deceive Eve. And then use Eve as a temple. To get to Adam. Remember the Bible says. God declared the end. From the beginning. But brothers and sisters, these things have been already warned to you. Hundreds and hundreds of hours, documentary after documentary, for years now, warning, crying in the wilderness, praying that as many as possible will open up their eyes and wake up. My brothers and my sisters, I plead with your soul. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah, wake up. Open up your eyes and look around you. We are running out of time. Brothers and sisters, do you not remember when I was pleading with you to not put your guard down months back? When the so-called mandates were going away and the face coverings were no longer needed and false teachers online began to mock and slander. But I told you, this is a strategy of warfare called the Trojan horse. Did I not warn you? And did I not tell you that one of the characteristics of the Antichrist, according to Daniel chapter 7, is that he will wear out the saints 
of the Most High God. But that word in the Hebrew is Bilah. It literally means to wear away, to wear out, to harass constantly. And it's interesting that the Strong's definition corresponding to H1086 is to be used in a mental sense to afflict and wear out the saints mentally as well. Let me ask you a question. If something is worn away, isn't it through a season of time? Think of anything in life. Your shoes don't get worn out the day you leave the mall buying them. It's from walking for a period of time, they slowly begin to wear away. This is psychological warfare. And if you're not paying attention, the warning is coming to pass because right now over in that Red Dragon Nation, there's supposedly another you-know-what and they're already making plans to shut things down. You better get your house in order. You don't have as much time as you think. Because remember one thing. Now the Antichrist has 70% of the world. Already under his subjection. That has already submitted. To the brick and slime within. To the confusing of the language of their genetic makeup. Remember the warning in The World is a Stage Part 2. Level 1 was manipulation. Level 2 was intimidation. Manipulation. This was, we'll pay you to take the abomination. We'll give you a free donut. You want a free beer? We'll give you things to take the abomination. Level number 2 was intimidation. If you don't take the abomination, you're losing your job. If you don't take the abomination, you cannot fly. If you don't take this, you can't make money. Level three is coming, brothers and sisters. And level three is not just manipulation or intimidation. It's domination. And now their strategy that by the grace of God, I will be talking about in the next part of this series will be their plan to make those that are faithful to Christ and refuse to receive the light of Lucifer, to make them look crazy. And this was the real agenda on why the beast has Kanye West on the floor playing in the chessboard of deception. Notice that Christians that are psychotic are the ones that make the headlines. Are you not following? Are you not paying attention to the laws that they want to pass? So that if somebody rejects the abomination, they can label them a danger to themselves. So yes, brothers and sisters, I am pleading with you once again to seek the Lord while he may be found. To get your house in order. To start to pray. To fast when, when you're led by God. To read your word and hide it in your heart that you may not sin against God. Be faithful to the Lord. Love your family. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Because none of us are promised tomorrow. But I know one thing. We have served the Lord and we have cried in the wilderness. We have warned you with tears. And however long the Lord allows us to remain here, just know one thing. There is hope for you. For you that has not turned your back on the Messiah. Seek Him now. Call on His name now. It's time to repent. We need the Lord. We need to gather together. We need to cry out. For a filling, for an outpouring of the mighty Holy Ghost. Because without Him, we won't make it. So be, so you have been warned again. 
that the warnings are coming to pass. And there's more, there's so much things, there's so many things that I need to talk to you about. But what can I do? We're already almost two hours in. Did you know in the very chapter of Daniel where it talks about the Antichrist wearing out the saints, it also says that the beast will seek to change times and laws. Ask yourself the question, do you think it is a coincidence? That the word for deadly wound being healed is plague. Look at the authority that the Antichrist exercised behind the green screen curtain where the entire world was shut down. This has never happened in human history where the entire world shut down by the authority of the dragon. But did you know that in Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 when it says that the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and received his mark in his forehead or in his hand I want you to look at the word worship I want you to look at worship in the Greek with me I want to remind you that that word there proskuneo it also means figuratively of G2965, meaning to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. You know, somebody desperate following orders to fawn or crouch to literally or figuratively prostrate oneself in homage. That means that it can be a literal bowing down or figuratively. Do you know what that word means to worship Figuratively means to bow down in submission to the laws of the beast. It's that word image, you know, the thing they worship. That word there is icon. But look at but look what it means though. It's an image, a figure, and a likeness. We'll have to get into that on the next part of this series. The world is a stage. But the one thing I will tell you is this. When you look down, it also says, applied to man on account of his power of command. That means 
that the whole world can worship the Antichrist by bowing down in submission to his laws and commands. Are you starting to see why you need to read your word and pray for the Lord to give you understanding, brothers and sisters? This is not a game. Please, please, for the sake of your own salvation, get right with Christ today. Stop pushing it off. The significance of this first uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing. It changes you if you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example. It's you who are changed, yeah. and of yeah. course this has a big impact on your identity. Yeah. And offer certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about. You know, when you began to, when you began to do that kind of gene editing, some people worried that you were changing what it means to be human. That's the problem, and uh, uh, it, uh, of course, the new uh, industrial revolution offers us many opportunities. Brothers and sisters, and for you that know me, you know very well, whenever I come out with these videos and documentaries, I always strive to put a message within the message. Because you know this beast system, this antichrist algorithm, has been hunting down anywhere online that stands against the abomination. So now we have to do it in a very wise way. But I want you to take a walk with me. So whenever we come out with videos, it doesn't even matter the topic. Eight to nine out of ten times, you're going to see me drop clues within videos to tell you to repent and warn you of the abomination and the plans that the Luciferians are setting up on the chessboard of deception right before your very eyes. A voice crying in the wilderness, but my question is, do you hear? Are you listening? And are you reacting? There was something very important that the Lord revealed in the conference we had in Florida called The Beast, which was. This is over five hours long and you can find it on our website. Go to revelationsofjesuschrist.com and click on the tab that says Mark of the Beast. Most of the videos are there waiting for you to watch so you can be prepared because the Bible says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. But in this message, one of the most important revelations that was given was when the Most High God said, I have declared the end from the beginning, saith the Lord was when the word stated, God has declared the end from the beginning. That means if you want to know the strategy, that means if you want to know the strategy that the dragon uses in the end of the days, that means you have to go back to the beginning of Genesis. And my question to you is this, that old serpent, that is mentioned in Revelation. Why do you think God brings that title, the old serpent, when referring to Satan all the way to the end of the Bible in the last book when referring to the end of the days? It's because God wanted you to remember the strategy and characteristic of that old serpent. Let me ask you a question. If God declared the end from the beginning and we go back to the book of Genesis, have you ever considered comparing the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to the end days with the mark of the beast? Have you ever considered that? 
Have you ever considered how did Satan cause Eve to dis to disobey God and cause herself to die and be kicked out of the Garden of Eden along with her husband, Adam? Because the Bible says, and Eve being deceived. And you see, Satan used Eve as a temple, as a vessel to get to Adam. But together, they were both punished. But let's go ahead and just talk about the strategy in the beginning to determine the strategy of the serpent in the beginning of Genesis to determine what he will do in the last hour. Was Satan honest with Eve? Did he tell her, listen, I am here to trick you. I want you to eat this forbidden fruit and when you eat it, you are going to die and you are going to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. This is my plan because I hate you and I hate Adam. Is that the strategy the old serpent used? Or did he use the art of deception? Did he trick Eve and lure her away from that foundation of protection, security, and truth and cause her to disobey the Lord God Almighty? He did. In fact, he went as far as not only lying to her, but he twisted the very words that God said to her. He misquoted the word, you could say. Because if God spoke to Adam and Eve, technically, that's the word of the Lord. And he deceived Eve into thinking something she would put into her body would be something that would be good and benefit her. But if you do a study on this matter, you will see when Eve and Adam partook of this forbidden fruit and put that within their body, they were changed genetically. I can prove it. Number one, their connection with God was broken. There was a time when the Messiah would visit them in the cool of the day, but after they put something into their body that changed them, it broke the connection and now they found themselves hiding from the Lord God who loved them so much. The connection was broken and their literal makeup of their body was changed. This is why that curse of sin passes from one person to the next, to the next, to the next, because it's in the actual DNA. That curse of sin was put into them when they put something into their body that they weren't supposed to do. So my brothers and sisters, if we parallel this to the end of the days where that old serpent is back to his old ways is he not deceiving the world once again is he not operating through false shepherds false preachers false prophets to twist the word of the lord to cause the masses and to cause those who are supposed to be on fire for god to be deceived like eve and to put something inside of their body that not only changes them, but breaks their connection with God once again. And this is what I was warning you about years ago. In the book of Isaiah, it says that they would hide behind the tree when referring to the abomination. Do you think that is a coincidence? That Adam and Eve would hide behind the tree because their connection with God was broken. And those who take the abomination in the end of the days would hide behind the tree once again. So brothers and sisters, when I put out these videos, 
out of desperation that you are not deceived. My question is, are you starting to wake up? Are you starting to realize what is really going on on the chessboard of deception? Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? We do have people who submit pieces to other two American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks. This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. Uh, at CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, ships had been established and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI? In 2012, DARPA, which is the research division of the military, started a program. It's called the Adept Protect P3 Program, Pandemic Prevention Platform. Look what they proposed. They said, listen, we are going to use gene encoded as a new category of preventive measures based on RNA or DNA. And in this approach, we will stop a pandemic within 60 days. Within 60 days, in 2012, this was started. The deception out in the open that this was rapidly developed, that there was all this stunning innovation. The contractors, Moderna got its first multi-million million dollar contract in 2013. This was part of a program. But the military came up with the idea of message RNA. It's not Pfizer or Moderna, not Operation Warp Speed. It wasn't in response to what was, you know, came out of Wuhan, China. This is a military program. When it was announced by Health and Human Services, Alex Azar, and the Department of Defense, that's who entered into this, you know, ushered us into the era. The military. Emergency use authorization is a mechanism to get rapid new technology into the military. It's not, it's not a mechanism for the public. Its first application broadly to the public was with the COVID pandemic. That's the reason why the FDA doesn't seem like they have any ownership over this. They can't seem to respond to it because it's a military program. This has a military uh, origin to it. And the program is executed like a military program. No one will be spared. There's no exceptions. Uh, you can kind of see that the similarities there. Because it's a military program, this is a military uh, origin to it. But in his estate shall he honor the god of forces. And a god whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Because it's a military program, this has a military uh, origin to it. I wanna show you what goes on in my mind But I don't think you can handle that And if I showed you what goes on in my mind The visions that I see in the night I'll show you what goes on in my mind Are you sure you can handle that? And if I showed you what goes on in my mind Peace rising with teeth of iron, many 
seeds inside them Oh Lord, where's your faithful few? Dreams that I see 